This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve. We're using a lot more policemen than usual, several hundred in fact. Uh, we shall keep the uh, Tottenham supporters segregated on the North Terraces and uh, the Chelsea supporters on the South Terraces. <laughs> And we saw clearly the thuggery of a group of hooligans who could never have claimed to have come along simply to enjoy the football. There's some dirty northern punt spits over me, I'll put a fucking white glass in his head. Welcome in guys to another crazy soccer hooligan story. This one is from the 1982 season, the FA Cup 82 season that regards Chelsea. No, this is not a blue Chelsea shirt, this is an orange Chelsea shirt, this is out of collection. But anyway, 1982 hooliganism was rife. It happened every weekend and thousands upon tens of thousands of people throughout men throughout the UK would punch lumps out of each other every weekend. This weekend, like I say, 1982, it was Chelsea at home at Stamford Bridge versus Liverpool first and then Tottenham Hotspur. Taking on Liverpool in the FA Cup because this was two FA Cup games. But FA Cup first game, Chelsea were taking on Liverpool at Stamford Bridge. It was a tough, tough game because at the time, Liverpool were the top team. Here's how I got to Stamford Bridge for that game and where I was living. Take a look. I'll be back in a sec. The zooming on in, Chelsea, Tottenham, Chelsea, Liverpool. It all happened at Stamford Bridge, as you know, and uh, we'll show you how we got there. And it's obviously down in London. Quicker zoom in, London there. And if you want more pictures of London, then we've got a few more towns. And you can see the general layout. The River of the Thames comes in. It's a big estuary, really, but it's a massive river. And it's not really advised to uh, swim in that, I'll tell you now. But anyway, getting closer to it, we had to uh, get from where we were staying, which was Southfields, and we made our way over to Stamford Bridge. Now, Southfields, you can see on the dot there, that's where we are right now, or we were on the day. And we had to get over to Stamford Bridge, and it's the, on the other side of the River Thames. And you had to get there with the public transport, London transport, fantastic transport system whether it's the uh, tube, the underground train, or whether it's on top of the ground, on your buses, etc. Fantastic service. But we have to get from Southfields over to Stamford Bridge, which actually is not in Chelsea. It's in Fulham, the area of Fulham. But to get over there, we used the underground, like I told you, the tube, as people say, and we traveled on the green line. Now, the green line is the district line. And uh, that's the line that I would use pretty much every day going to work or whatever I was doing. But I always use the green line because it connected us to the rest of London. And I was staying in Southfields, as you've seen there. But there's a map for you for the total London Underground. Massive thing. But going for our trip, well, we started at Southfields and then we made our through a few stops. As you see, we're going up there and we make a few more stops and a few more stops and a few more stops. And eventually, four stops later, <laughs> not a long ride. We get to Fulham Broadway, where that's where we get out of the train and we make our way up Fulham Road towards Stamford Bridge. So there you go. There's a little trip, you know, a little bit more. I loved going on the tube. Loved going on the tube. You can get everywhere really quickly. But anyway, the game, after getting out at Fulham Broadway, I walk up Fulham Road. Remember, Chelsea's not in Fulham. Sorry, Chelsea's in Fulham. <laughs> Not Chelsea's in Chelsea. Anyway, I walk up Fulham Road to get to Stamford Bridge. There's a couple of exits you can get to. Take a look how you get into the ground. Normally, I'd go to the West Stand to meet Peter if I was going there. But my place of choice before then was always to stand in the shed. And I'd stand in the shed literally every game I went to Chelsea. But sometimes I would meet up with Peter. And Peter was a fantastic guy. Just a little back news on Peter. Peter was a manager at Safeway's Superstore kind of thing there in uh, Wimbledon. And uh, that's where I met Peter. He was a manager there. I worked there for a couple of months just to get some money as a kid. Stayed there for quite a while. I had a great time because of Peter. We became good mates. And he would drive to the Chelsea games all over the UK. And I'd go with Pete, Lawrence and a few other guys. We'd have a fantastic time. He was not a hooligan. He was a big Chelsea fan and a big, big, soft-hearted fella. Pete was great, is great. And uh, he would take me to the games. He took me under his wing because I'm a young kid, right? So anyway... 
I'm going to the West Stand this game, not the Shed. So it's like, oh, I'm going to get sit down. Don't have to stand. Going with the royalty. Whoop, the snobs. I'm sitting with the, you know, the. Uh, I'm sitting with the, um, the, uh, the Gold Club members. The prawn sandwich mob. Yeah, the prawn sandwich mob. I'm sitting with them kind of members. Anyway, I'm just a kid sitting there. All of a sudden, the game's going through. 90 minutes go through. Chelsea eventually are uh, literally in a good position against Liverpool because they're winning 2-0. They would absolutely win that game 2-0 and go through to the next round. Now, quick shirt change before we tell you the terrible story. Shirt change right now to the terrible story. And it was terrible. Chelsea win the FA Cup game and it was the fifth round. They win that game 2-0 against Liverpool. But what happened at the end of that game was absolutely terrible. I felt so bad watching this and felt so sad for the Liverpool fans. Anyway, by the way, Liverpool shirt... This is the 1892, no it's not, it's the 1992 edition of Liverpool shirt. It's the 100th year shirt for Liverpool. So there you go, started in 1892, and this shirt is from 1992. So it is the 100th edition shirt of Liverpool. Anyway, to the terrible story. I'm sitting in the West End, and I'm looking at the East End over there. So behind you is the East End, and you're looking at the West End. Over there is the Shed. And over there's the away enclosure. The away enclosure is a big chunk of real estate. You could put a few thousand people in there and Liverpool filled it because they always had a lot of people in the crowd following them, yeah? Either scouts travelled with the team or people would come from all over the UK to watch Liverpool because they were a big number. Now, to the bad number, to the terrible story. I'm watching in that far corner in the East End where the away enclosure is. And I'm like, it looks like it's misting. And I'm like, it's not raining. It's not raining. And I'm looking at this misting. And I'm like, Pete, look, over there. And he's like, yeah, he goes, I can see it. It's pretty bad, Steve. And I'm like, well, what is it? He goes, they're bottling them. I'm like, what? He goes, they're bottling them. What the headhunters had done, because the headhunters sat in the east stand. Yeah, that was their den. That was where they love to be, because they're close to the away fans, so they can get to taunt them and have some fun. They are drug crates of bottles close to that end of the stadium and then literally ambushed and started throwing them. Like I say, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Never did before. Felt so sorry for the Liverpool fans. But that was one of the things that I saw with my own eyes at Stamford Bridge when the hooliganism was really rife. And I'll tell you what, people did get cut up, obviously. It was not a good scene. But the next story, what I tell you, is, is literally, uh, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. At the end of the game, it finishes 2-0 to Chelsea. They get through. The next game in the FA Cup was against Tottenham Hotspurs. That's where we're going next. And that Tottenham Hotspurs story was literally uh, the closest I've ever come to. I'll tell you about that with another shirt change. Another shirt change. Rather Canadian, don't you think? I think this is rather lovely. And getting back to the story, the Tottenham game. Setting it up, it was Tottenham in the day, Chelsea not so in the day. Tottenham the big number. The game eventually finished 3-2 to Tottenham Hotspur. They had some mega, mega stars like Glenn Hoddle, Steve Perriman, Ray Clements, a lot of big players, Garth Crooks as well. Massive team, massive team. But when the game finished, or when it was getting towards the end of the game, I'd done the same as the last game. Peter says, Stevie, meet me in the West End. I've got a ticket for you. I'm like, okay, Pete, I'll be there. So I get there, meet him, ticket, boom, boom, get inside, sitting next to Pete, watching the game, da da da, -da. fantastic game, fantastic game. Chelsea were in it, but then they weren't in it. Eventually it was 2 2, and Tottenham, the Spurs, get a late winner, and I think it was Steve Archibald that got the winner. In fact, I'm sure it's Steve Archibald that got the winner. 1982 FA Cup. Quarter final, Steve Archibald, Scotsman. Got the winning goal for Tottenham in that game. Finished 3 2 to Spurs over Chelsea. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway, the game's coming to a close. You know it's going to be a loss. I'm thinking to get into the tube, the underground, before the massive squad, massive rush from the people. And I said my goodbyes to Pete, said goodbye to Lawrence, and I'm on my way out. All of a sudden, there's Tottenham fans, because it could only be Tottenham fans in a Chelsea zone, literally swashing. At people and slashing people up with box cutters, standing knives, razor razor knives. And I'd never seen this before up close. But on seeing that, they're coming our way. I'm literally running out the stadium. And I literally ran all the way down the road until at least I felt comfortable. I literally ran for probably a good 200 metres outside the ground towards the station where I'd walked up and running back down. 
And I didn't stop running for, like I say, a good while. I mean, I could run fast. I was fit as a fiddle. And uh, I've never seen anything like it. And people did get cut up and razored at that game. And that was one of the worst things up close I'd ever seen was people getting slashed with knives. Didn't want to didn't want to be in that close proximity to them people. That's why I ran. But I thought I was out of trouble. No, no, not at all, Stevie. You're not out of trouble yet, Sonny. I'm walking towards the train station, full on Broadway train station. I get on the train and I'm literally breathing a bit of a sigh of relief, not gasping like, <gasps> I'm like, okay, that was uh, close. And uh, rolling down the district line, the green line, back to all Southfields, get to Southfields. I'm thinking, hey, everything's good. Everything's fine. And I'm wearing a Chelsea scarf. Mistake. Big mistake. Take off the scarf when you're away from the ground. Nobody knows what team you support. You don't get in trouble. All of a sudden, I've got two big guys literally preying on me, and they pick on me and literally pick me up and throw me through a window at the train station. I'm not kidding you. It happened. There's a video down below. You can see that. And I'm going to put a playlist together of all the crazy soccer hooligan stories that I visualized and saw with my own eyes that we've got catalogued. We'll make a, a playlist or a channel of those so you can see them all. But I tell you this, um, it said on the game day program a few things about what were going on at the time. Read about that program right now. And it would explain the time, the era that we were living in. I was not a hooligan never was my brother was a hooligan he had his passport taken away from him every time england played away from the uk so if england had a game with france germany anyone he was not allowed to leave the uk and had to report to the police station and not just him tens of thousands of people have had to do that over the years as well it's part of the policing policy about keeping the hooligans in check now hooliganism back then was literally Back to back with your, your team, your mates, your community, and a few beers. Nowadays, it seems that the young version, the young generation, like to do that, but they're throwing a massive amount of cocaine into the, the mix as well. That's the news coming out of hooliganism right now. That's the young'uns doing it right now. But anyway, that was a story back in the day. Chelsea versus Liverpool. Chelsea versus Tottenham. I lived it. I saw it. It was not a good time. And there's another crazy story from the crazy soccer hooligan videos that you got to see. I'm going to bring more, but that's the one for now. Cheers, guys. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> This is Ultimate Soccer with Soccer Steve.